Hi, and welcome to the GAC Weekly. You know what? It's time to get things underway. As a matter of fact, we are going to get a jump start on Season 7 of the GAC Weekly right now. We're going to get it done. It seems like everything which uh, had to do with 2019-2020 got cut short, so why not the GAC Weekly? Why not getting a jump start on Season 7? We're going to do that right now. I'm Joey McWilliams. And it is an absolute privilege to get to visit with the Associate Commissioner for Communications of the Great American Conference, your friend and mine, Eric Moyer. And Eric, hey, listen, it is time to start talking some sports. I know that there it's still a, a little ways off is actually taking to the field, the diamond, the pitch, the court, whatever it may be, but uh, we can talk some sports. It's going to be the first of a series of, of GAC Weekly, getting to visit with people from each of the 12 schools in the Great American Conference. And that is before we get into previews, which hopefully will be not that far around the corner. Uh, everything is pending. We all know that. Yeah, keep those fingers crossed and toes and arms and legs and everything else, intentional foul, whatever the case may be. Uh, just get ready for that. But man, it's good to see you. Good to see you, too. That was quite a preamble. You've been working up for that for a few weeks? <laughs> I tell you what, I'm always ready. And and I know that you're always there to critique my previews and, and make sure that uh, I know exactly how long my questions are. But that's okay. Well, 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 the battery life on my computer started at 100. It's already done at 17. So <laughs> I'm not saying you went wrong, but, you know, tighten it up. That, hey, listen, that's all right. Look, you <laughs> let, let me turn it over to you then. Because you've kept us all going during this time with lots of cool activities, talking about things that have gone on in the first nine years of the Great American Conference. That's kind of a segue into the fact that uh, this is going to be year number 10 for the GAC. But talk talk about the fun things, at least with the brackets and all that. That's right. Well, when, when everything ended in, in March, uh, you know, got the, got the old noggin working on what I could do to, to keep putting out content. We couldn't go. We couldn't go dark for five months. I am still collecting a paycheck. I thought I had to earn it somehow and decided to come up with, uh, with a couple of things. First, we did have the, the GAC uh, goat bracket um, back during the basketball time where we uh, seated a, I think it ended up being 33 women and 31 men uh, for an online vote to determine the greatest player of all time. Um, it was initially started on Twitter, then turned into a strictly just online uh voting system uh we had a final four of Haley tucker hayden pretty from southwestern pink jones from henderson and katie webb from southeast and so all uh no reason to bias at all uh by the voters <laughs> uh, we had i guess we, we we experimented with with uh with some zooming and we had a a, a, a conversation with all four of them that i thought was pretty cool so everybody go back and check out on our uh, on our youtube page to see the four of them talk about who they would add uh, to put their fifth person in to be their in their starting lineup. Some picked female, some picked another a, a male player to fill out the roster. Been a bit of a neat hybrid to uh, to work out. Um, no one picked Fatima Adams, so clearly they all were suffering from recency bias <laughs> to not put the uh, the Tech All American on the team. Uh, Katie <laughs> Webb ended up beating uh, Haley Tucker in the uh, in the final, which was uh, which was cool to see because she had. Uh, Hadn't had gotten the uh, you know her season to, to play out, so this was something that, is, as she shared with me, was something that uh, all the webs uh, were deeply interested in following out this year ago and check uh, some of the family Facebook pages about how much they promoted it and tried to get the votes carried her way, and ended up having I think over four thousand votes in those four days uh, total uh, in total cast. Uh, so that was so that was fun to have happen. It was uh, perhaps not you know a number one overall seed that won, but so rarely is the one number one overall seed win uh, turn play on the field. Uh, and Katie was certainly a, a fantastic representative uh, for us for these five years <laughs> uh, in the league. Um, and uh, easy. And, uh, and uh, trying to have a little fun with it, I did go and search out an actual goat uh, trophy with a little goat on it and Use some uh, personal funds to uh, to send it down to her. And she told me she sent a picture, so it's probably just sprayed amongst the rest of her uh, of her. She was oh, that was cool what she sent out there. Um, but then the thing we've been doing daily is in the uh, the GAC flashback. If you 
use the uh, unofficial name of GAC. You have GAC flashbacks, therefore it rhymes. Uh, just pulling out things that uh, happen each day in history. Um, over the past uh, nine, eight years, I guess now, we, we, nothing happened in 2011 when we were lead yet. Um, so we've been going through there. Uh, you know, we're now, obviously, we should be rolling postseason player now. So we, I think just yesterday was the uh, the infamous uh, uh, Henderson State Southern Arkansas baseball game in uh, in Arkadelphia, where our uh, pitcher of the year, Brian Harrelson, took a a uh, uh, errant throw. It wasn't maybe errant uh, throw off of, the, of his own catcher trying to make a force out second base and cut it right off the uh, the temple. Uh, yeah. That uh, uh, I shared with him on a on a on a message yesterday and said happy anniversary and he said you guys always treat me so well and I said well if you had lost the guy I definitely wouldn't share it with you he did get the win in the game so I was uh, more eager to share it with him um, and it happened to be the first on my mind there we've had we just finished up pretty much all GAC softball uh, flashbacks we're now mostly into softball regionals uh, from the past uh, golf. Regionals are all kind of been, would have been completed by this point. We've had all of those to look back on. And it's just cool when you, you don't think about it in a day, but you go and look at like maybe three days ago or so on like, on like 2017 was like the end of the, of the softball, the start of baseball, the first day of a, of a golf regional and like a random like tennis regional where we were like, oh, for only like eight games that day, we, you know, that day was pretty, was pretty <laughs> fulfilling for us. Didn't realize that we'd had so much going on the day. Get on that sports information director to get all the work done that day. Um, <laughs> so that's kind of like the, that's certainly been something always daily to look forward to and put out. And we'll you know we'll keep going as long as uh, the GAC has uh, someone win uh, on that day. So we probably go to about Memorial Day when we probably had our last uh, team or individual success. They'll point out we haven't delved into much of like awards per se. So like someone named all American, we haven't done that, but it's all been on the field um, achievements. Uh, and then we even had, uh, going back last month, we had, I look back when the three times we've had football players drafted. So that was also part of the, of the flashback type thing. So it's been fun. It's just been received, uh, you know, fairly well. People just kind of, you know, I, when I send something out and if I happen to have their kind of information from other powers or whatever, I'll say, hey, you know, this happened on back day. I'm like, oh, no, that was so cool. I remember everything about that day. So, uh, you know, if I had been better, I would have done these interviews with those people to look back on these things. But I'm bad. <laughs> <laughs> so I haven't. Uh, but the next time we have a worldwide pandemic, I will prepare. Oh, and I will do the book on the internet, and I will talk to them. You just you just prepare yourselves so yourself well. I'm just cheering totally against that or anything even remotely close to this. I've had my fill of the time of no sports. Kind of had that as a hashtag on uh, the the MidwestSports.net YouTube channel. And I'm ready to not have that as a hashtag, to be honest with you. But that's okay. Well, listen, you know, they can follow you too, not just on the uh, the Great American Conference website, which is greatamericanconference.com. Very easy to follow, but they can also, you know, follow you on Twitter as well, correct? Yeah. Uh, a bit of a fun story there over this time of, of no sports. Uh, back on March 23rd, uh, we get the little Twitter bubble to say, happy birthday. This is when you started You started on Twitter. I'm like, oh, how about that? I bet it's the league's birthday. Well, no, it was March 9th when the league was created, but we started to count two weeks later. So whatever. We're just, you know, Brian already said it a couple weeks later. Uh, so I went to go add the uh, the birthday year to our Twitter account. Well, that was 2010. Do the math. That makes us 10 years old, and Twitter frowns upon people that are under 13 having Twitter. <laughs> so they locked us out. I'm like, oh, okay, this is an easy thing. You can clearly see that the company business is not a person. Well, the long and the short of it is they did not fix it. And I got an email <laughs> from Twitter about a week ago saying, since you've been locked out for 30 days, your account's been deleted. So we had no followers. A time of no sports, no followers. So the account is restarted at GAC Athletics. Uh, <laughs> then, what, we, we are restarted since the first week on Friday. We're up to over 400 followers already, so we're about 96 hours away from where we were back in the day. Um, but uh, please come back and follow us. Uh, putting out good things. The uh, the fake account that I had created in the meantime of 
G-A-C-I-N-X, where the L was a capital I. Uh, served us well during yeah. the lockdown period. Um, people just start to follow it, but don't do it anymore. <laughs> follow the old GAC Athletics page on the Twitters, and uh, you'll get uh, all the latest and greatest news from us there first. I just I followed them both. I just I didn't catch the capital. I just kept on following. Every time I'd get news, I followed it. Man, I've I've got you back, Eric. I'll just you know, follow whatever, uh, whatever hashtag the GAC man. I'm all about it. Well, hopefully, uh, unfortunately, no one. Uh, it was not actually a parody account, so it wasn't like a darn Schefter tweeting out fake NFL reports. So <laughs> it was always legit news. I think our bio for it was sending out all news related to the GAC until GAC Athletics comes back. It actually said is unlocked at one point, which I was looking at going, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I, uh-huh. I, I could not. I, I, that's a great story. That is a great story. I and, hope uh, everyone watches this video. One of, one of our, uh, speaking of uh, Twitter lockouts, our, uh, the aforementioned Haley Tucker, she must have done the same thing because she texted me um, a week or two ago when I reached the new account. said, you can be follower one. On the new account, I was like, I can't. My account's been locked out. I said, what do you do? And he made it a third. She's like, Haley, <laughs> I told you to have to our account. And then she did it to her own. So she said her, her own account is, 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 is wiped out for the time being. So oh, I man. Think she's more of an important figure. She can get hers back without having to restart all over again. But I, I'm just going to guess that Haley Tucker will have better luck than you did. I'm just guessing. I don't know. Could all even out. Could all even out. I don't know. They, uh, you know, the account, the, 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 the very fine folks at Twitter support uh, <laughs> sent, a, sent a, a very nice message of during this, this time of COVID, we have less people to handle these things. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> 45 seconds fix that email took at least a minute and a half. You could have saved more time and just unlocked it. But it's way that you get to start from the bottom. Uh, I now, you know, we used to follow, I think, 2,800 people. We think we follow 380. So I'm sorry for those of you who, were, who we were following. Uh, we'll try and bring you back, too. But uh, hopefully they can they can come back to us. Well, I'm uh, I'm one of those 380. So there. Thank you. I, I am I am all about that. Matter of fact, let's uh, live right here. I know this is actually a uh, recorded just a little bit earlier in the day. So let's let's see if anything comes up here. I will try that. I don't know. I've got to get. I've got another monitor right here. I'm gonna pull this back up live. Old man, old man working technology is a dangerous situation. See how this works out. I I am not an old man. True or false? You're a grandfather. Uh, true. I rest my case wrong. <laughs> All right, here we go. Well, okay. I I don't see the actual number. I think uh, four thirty eight. 438. Okay. I think I, I think I, it pulled up the old account. So we're at 438 as of this recording on May 12th. So we need to, uh, we need to get that up a little bit, uh, a little bit stronger. Well, again, I'm there, the there, will be, there will be plenty of pandering over the rest of the summer before we get started again, hopefully in the fall. Please uh, follow us. Please follow us along with Eric Moyer here on the GAC weekly, which has devolved, but just to, you know, Throw back the curtain. This is a typical phone conversation between Joey McWilliams and Eric Moyer, just to uh, let you know. Hey, listen, there's a lot of uh, uh, a lot of laughter and possibly a story about how things went awry. So there you go. I think that about sums it up. Listen, uh, look. In in all sincerity, headed for year number ten as we start officially start this seventh season. We're headed for year number ten in the Great American Conference. Eric, that's a milestone year. It is. Uh, I think that uh, uh, economics, notwithstanding, it's because enjoy great stability uh, with the league in terms of membership, and um, and we've only grown. We, we've moved at it from back in the beginning, and we had the core nine, and then we added the three from Oklahoma to get us to a, a nice twelve. Uh, so if, if we had been everything had been running its normal course, we would have had a you know really you know no complaints. Uh, uh, in terms of who we, so what we look like as as a league, we've got uh, you know 16 sports, we've got 12 members. I think everyone was was super happy with where things were, and as we were progressing here into 2020, we've just got to deal with this uh, you know the giant monkey wrench in the in the in the uh, 
uh, that we're all facing. Um, <laughs> and it's just leads to a whole lot of, of unanswered questions with uh, how skills are going to look, how championships are going to look, and obviously what uh, what team rosters are going to look like. Um, it's really cool. back. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. And I'll tell you, you know, the the from – as as frustrating as it is, because when I left Bartlesville on May on March eighth, I had no idea that would be the last game I broadcast, you know, for this this athletic year, and that that was a real downer. And I remember, you know, when the, I tried to keep up with the sports and everything, when everything went sideways, that March eleventh, of course, was the uh, the Utah Jazz Oklahoma City Thunder game that pretty much broke the NBA. And then, you, you know, March 12th was when the NCAA tournament, and you got all this stuff coming left and right. And information, the, the thing about it that I think that frustrated me, I talked about this uh, uh, on another show that, that I do, people were, websites were sourcing each other. They were citing each other as their own sources, which was just crazy on that day. And, of course, everything went bananas. But, you know, that aside, it it's we're, we're talking about a lot of things right now, not as much sports as we'd like to, but when the next year comes around, there are going to be a lot of storylines. I mean, a lot of storylines to hit. And I think it could be interesting. For sure. I mean, is everything, is, sorry, is everything, is everything played normal and everything can kind of get back in the normal flow of, of volleyball and, and football and, and soccer with and cross country in the, in the fall and then basketball uh, to, to follow. You know, there's some think it's pretty popular, the model of, of, of the fall sports being pushed to the spring, you know, I think at the lower levels, that's maybe more considered because there aren't as many things like drafts to consider. I know right. that's something that when you listen to still help with Division One football, they that's what they consider is do they would they really be playing in March and April with a draft to follow? And then something that would affect us too is can you ask kids to finish playing in March and restart up in August the following year? Um, I, you know, we, we point out football because it is the most, uh, you know, the one with we're most perilous for injury. Not to discount that it's hard to recover from a volleyball player or cross cross country. You know, that's one thing to talk about too is how you handle cross country in the track. Uh, with with how that would fall if, if if we have no fall no sports in the fall. Um, so every sport has these has these challenges. And everyone's focused on football because it is the revenue generator. Um, and some places it kind of sets budgets in motion um but everyone will be dealing with that uh that issue if we didn't get to start on time and certainly if things are pushed to the spring it would be very you know interesting to see it all play out uh, if, it, if it was put that way because it would be it would throw off everyone's normal calendars but if it gets the maximum number of games played with these later have fans of the whole time you know you have a hard time telling me that's not the best option I, I would I want the maximum number of games played and, and not just the sports fan in me. I want it for the student athletes who have you know worked hard to get to this point and I don't want to to see taken away from them what what we've in essence seen taken away from them to an extent right now. Now some may get another opportunity, some won't, but uh, in in this 2020 2021 athletic year, which we're unofficially starting now on the GAC, uh, with this broadcast unofficially. Um, but, uh, I sure would like to see them get to play all the games that that's a big deal. Yeah. You know, it's hard to get in the minds of everybody, all the decision makers heads of where they're, what they, what they value. Um, you know, for me, it's maximum games with out restriction, you know, in terms of, uh, of, uh, of practice time in terms of, uh, of, uh, fans in terms of tests um that maybe is probably the most cautious approach but to, to jam things in without giving you know the uh the best experiences right uh, really really sets it up for being a, a forgetful year for everybody that participated right well yeah and and all things considered i mean i i just want to you know people say all the time well all things being equal well certainly right now all things are not equal by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, this is, this is definitely, like I said, on, on another show that I do, people talked about uh, being in uncharted waters. Well, lots of times people were saying uncharted waters. That's not what they are uncharted, but we are charting them right now. 
And uh, so, you know, we'll get through this on the other side. And, and yes, we want it to be a, a positive and a pleasant, uh, a, a good experience to walk out of. I, I don't want it to be a forgettable experience. Although at this point, yeah. hard pressed to think any of this is going to be forgettable. <laughs> No, certainly, certainly not. I mean, you know, we're we're saying that the the standard, but you just don't want you know kids to think they're being forced into action for right. you know a superficial reason. You want it to be done with uh, the best research and the best uh, advice being followed um, to 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 make sure everyone you know to get the the best experience because everyone's time in theory is finite with what they get to play. I mean, it was, Yep. Exemptions are being made for the spring athletes, but eventually you do have to run out because there are kids that are committed for 21, 22, verbally at least, that are coming to school. So you do have to, you know, not clear the deck, that's too crass of a term, but you do have to cycle kids through so that you can have uh, the next wave just the same experiences that the previous classes have gotten, gotten, gotten to have. Right. No, I completely understand. I completely understand. Well, Eric, listen, I, I appreciate your time today. Thank you for getting things started for us today. And, and we're going to get to hear from, from coaches, from sports. You can, say it, you can say it bigger names. You can say it bigger names. I, we need to hear from some bigger names throughout the conference. <laughs> that was not where I was headed. Uh, from coaches, some uh, sports. It's hard to get smaller. From what? It's hard to get smaller than me. It's hard to get. <laughs> uh, administrators, athletes, and more. In the next two and three weeks, here on the Great oh, on the Great American Conference GAC Weekly Broadcast, uh, as we are officially starting season seven, now we have determined that now headed into year number ten in the GAC, I believe there at some point in time will even be a Will Pruitt sighting. So uh, we're we're pushing toward that. Hope to have that happen. Maybe. Yeah, uh, I, I I don't think he's that hard of a get. If you uh, <laughs> if you know the right people, he he can do these squeeze out some time to talk to you. Will Pruitt, the commissioner, by the way, not only the commissioner of the Great American Conference, but the commissioner since its inception back in 2011 and uh, a fantastic person. I, I appreciate what he does. I think he's doing a great job for the league. So uh, look forward to getting to hear from him. But again, all uh, throughout the, the conference, the 12 schools, the symmetry in the, the GAC is just unparalleled in two states, six schools in each state, four public, two private of those six in each state. And uh, it's just, uh, it is a great league. Eric, you do a fantastic job. I appreciate getting to work with you. And I'm very thankful to get to visit with you today and get us kicked off here and, and getting this season going. I appreciate you choosing me to be the uh, leadoff hitter for season seven. Uh, hopefully you there's no base. cancellation. You, you got on base. They just need to get you around. Uh, that's uh, Old Reds broad because George Graham would say you got to get them on, get them over, and get them in. There you go. Yeah, and now it may take something to hit deep into the field because I don't know if you're going to get it around the bases that quickly. But still, they did. You, you did. You see, what? You, I'm sorry. You, what? See these, you, you see these wheels? <laughs> they can turn, can't they? They can turn. All right. <laughs> Eric Moyer, Associate Commissioner for Communications for the Great American Conference. And you know what? Before this goes any further off the rails, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Doing a great job. Go check things out on the Twitter account, the old new Twitter account. And uh, check things out, by the way, is uh, especially through the month of May, reliving old and, and good memories in the GAC from times gone past through the first eight and nine seasons of the Great American Conference. Check that out. Remember those days in history. Eric Final word before I close this out. Hope. That's a good word. I like that word. That's a good word. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll leave it with that. For Eric Moyer, I'm Joey McWilliams. Thanks for watching this premiere episode of this season of the GAC Weekly. And more is on the way, so keep tuning in. By the way, it is at MidwestSports.net's YouTube channel, the home of the GAC Weekly. Please do subscribe. God bless you. Have a great day.